If you're looking to break into tech or data analytics, you need to learn how to automate things because a lot of my job as an analyst can be automated pretty easily. And in the world where AI is taking over tons of jobs and tons of responsibilities, we need to learn how to use AI to become analyst of the future, not analyst of today. So in this video, we're gonna build a data analyst AI agent that actually reads data from Google Sheets and actually uses that data to analyze it, then send it over as an email to our boss or stakeholder. So I've been doing automation since 2021. My first automation was actually taking emails and then organizing it and putting it into folders if our company can see. And now with AI, this term AI automation is blowing up and everyone's talking about it. So automation has been easier than ever with tools like NADAN, Make, and all these other workflow companies that are popping up. So in this video, I'm going to be breaking down the theory behind AI agents and why they matter for data analysts, a simple framework for actually planning your automation. And we'll be building this step by step in NADAN. So feel free to follow along and some more advanced tips I've learned by building dozens of these automations up until this point. So before we dive into the technical stuff, I want us to think about this conceptually. So here I've created a little thing in Google Drawing where we can actually see how we plan the new automation. And essentially we have three different pillars here. And before we start any agent whatsoever, we want to figure out the pain points. Look, we're not in the business here of just doing automations for the sake of doing them or using AI for the sake of doing them. We want to figure out a business need and build something for that business need. So I highly recommend figuring out the problem space. What manual work do we want to eliminate? What are our pain points? And in this case, we have a ton of manual spreadsheet work we need to send to our boss or our manager every single week. We don't have a way to use natural language to just be like, hey, what were our sales last quarter? And it's pretty time consuming, right? To weekly send the same exact report week over week with minor changes, a lot of time. So this is a use case where we'd use an AI agent and we can actually draw out our architecture. So the second phase of this is actually drawing the solution architecture. How will our bot actually work? And finally is the implementation plan. What tools do we need? And in this case, when we draw out our architecture, we can figure out what tools we actually need. So if you're anything like me, when I got started, you might be thinking this seems really complicated, right? How do we actually build a data analyst AI agent that can email people, get data and actually analyze data? So it feels impossible. Once you break it down into the chunks, it gets a lot more easier and you start to not forget it. When it comes down to the architecture, what I'm thinking we build here is we have a chat bot where the user can talk to it. So think of your stakeholder will be talking here, or maybe you as a data analyst else use this AI agent to automate your workflow. We have our AI agent and think of this as the brain. This is pretty dumb, right? If you just have the user in the chat and doesn't connect anything, you won't say anything, right? So we create our brain here and there are pretty much three main components in our AI agent or the brain. One being the LLM model. This is what AI you're using. What LLM do you want to use? Do you want to use Llama? Do you want to use OpenAI? Do you want to use Anthropic, Google, Gemini, whichever one? And each model in each company is good for its own different things. Traditionally, I've seen Claude is better for code. Uh, maybe OpenAI is better for writing and Gemini might be better for search like perplexity. So given those pillars, you can find the best model for the job. In this case, I'm going to use OpenAI for our model. The next part is memory. If you don't have this memory component here, the AI agent is going to be stateless. And what stateless means is it won't be able to refer to previous conversation. So if you ask, hey, what are the sales last quarter for this product line? And then next message, you're like, hey, what are the sales this quarter for that same product line? I won't remember what the product line you specified earlier is. So that's why it's very important we include memory. We have a pretty decent memory workflow. And the final part here are the tools. What tools does your AI agent have access to? Because if it doesn't have tools, there's no point in creating an AI agent, right? The whole point of using NADA and the whole point of these AI agents is that they can do things for you. They have a brain and they can do things. So in this case, can send emails, maybe read emails. But in our case for the data analysis spot, all we really need for this simple assignment is we want to get data. The next part, We'll make it a bit more complex just for the demonstration purposes. We want to send an email out to our boss. So two tools that we have, one being is we get data. And the second tool is we want to send an email out with our insights that we generate here. So that's pretty much the bot we can actually turn over into NADN um, and we can actually get building. But before we dive into that, I want to talk about our data set. We're going to be using this thing called analytics report. This is a synthetic data set, fictitious completely, that I came up with in Claude. So it's a fake data set. Don't try to email these people. It's not, they're not real people, not real emails. Second part is the system prompt. So when it comes to AI agents, there are two prompts. One is the prompt that you use to talk to the AI. So think of like when you're opening chat GPT, you're just talking to them. The system prompt is the back end. So a lot of like these tools built on top of AI, like Lovable or Cursor or uh, whatever you're using that use another third-party service have prompts. How do they want the AI to act? And in this case, we want it to be an NADN data analyst AI agent. And they're going to be using this tool called the get data tool, which is going to pull data from a Google sheet and guide the users step-by-step -step, narrated actions and turn rows into insights that you can actually use. So we have our tool here, the context. We talk about when to call it. We have our current time and date if it needs it. 
and then we have the output format of what we want to look like. So there's like, like a clear framework here. I can make a video on that depicting this clear prompting framework. But yeah, the, this is the next generation prompt engineers. Okay. And the next part, it's going to be able to send an email out. Um, so I'm just going to have tested out an outlook for you guys. All right. So this is the tool we're going to be using here. It's called N8N. Um, it seems to be the viral topic right now. I traditionally have edited more in Python, but N8N is pretty easy, especially if you're breaking into the space now. It's very easy. If you can draw flow charts, you can use N8N. And here I, I'm pretty big on version control. So we call this data analyst v2 because i've already made this before and the first step of this is to use some sort of chat how are we going to communicate with our ai so we'll type in chat we'll find the chat trigger here um, we want to make it publicly available so we can actually use it so say hi hi there i am a data analyst assistant how can i help you and input placeholder we can just say Type your message here. That's fine. And then we'll do a uh, title. Your first insight. And then response mode. When last node finishes. So there we go. We have our setting figured out for a trap message. We can actually type it in here. Um, we can also just go to this URL and use it too later. So after we build this, we actually need to build the brain. Right now, it's just a chatbot, a glorified chatbot. So nothing should happen here. So now we go into building the brain, and this is the AI agent component. Type in AI agent here, and then we get our AI agent template. So as I said, when we were going through the, the Google drawing board, we have three main things we need to solve here. One is the what chat model we want to use, one is what memory, and one is the tools we need to build out. In this case, let's start with a chat model. I like to use OpenAI just because I use it for my startup and, and my companies and my freelance. Um, it's the simplest for me, and for this use case, I think it makes sense. Um, in this case, I'll use 4.1 mini, just defaulted to that. It doesn't really matter what you use, um, although there are certain models that are better for certain tasks. So in this case, we'll just use 4.1 mini. And the next step is we want to program our AI agent. What do we want it to act like? And this is where we get into something called the system message, which I mentioned earlier. So right now, just saying you're a helpful assistant, we're going to want to copy the system prompt I created earlier. You can use ChatGPT to generate this for yourself. We'll paste this in, and there we go. We have our system prompt in. Now, theoretically, this should work, um, our AI agent, but I want, to, I want to walk you through. Right now, it's pretty much just a glorified chat bot. So here... It's just, it's pretty much like talking to ChatGPT. Hey, how can I assist you with your spreadsheet today? Would you like help loading or inspecting data from Google Sheet? But I can't actually do that. So now we need to actually build in a memory because right now it won't remember. It's pretty stateless. And we can just use simple memory right here. And context windows, like how many previous messages do you want it to remember? In this case, let's say we want 10 previous messages. And the final part of all this is actually building out the tool. What do we want the AI agent to do? Because if we don't have tools, it's like, what's the actual point of, of building this? We can just use ChatGPT or Claude and do this manually. So the tools I want is I want to use Google Sheets because our data is stored in Google Sheets. And we're going to call this get data. My Google Sheets already authenticated. I can make a video on how to do this, making OpenAI keys or API keys. OpenAI is pretty simple. You just go to openai.com and I think there's an API component. I can I can make a, a video on how to make, how to build a token and such. Uh, I already have it authenticated. You only might need to authenticate your Google account. I'm going to choose my document here, analytics report. I'm going to choose my sheet here, which is sheet one. And now it has access to the data set that I want, which is perfect. Okay, so now at this point, our AI agent can actually pull data. It can actually memorize what we talked about previously. So I'm going to copy this URL here and I'm going to go ask, ask it, hey, can you provide a high level analysis of my Google Sheet? So now it's using ChatGPT, it's using the get data feature and it's analyzing it. So here it talks about the rows. It says you have 25 rows. The data represents orders, order ID, date, customer ID, payment method. So we can see it actually was able to pull this up and we go back, it's accurate. We have 25 different rows here. So let's ask it something a bit more complex. How many customers do we have? Here we have we have 25 orders in the sheet and you're counting. So perfect, it works. And now let's say we want to take it a step further. We want to actually email it to our team. We are able to do this analysis and now we want to email it. So we'll type in our Gmail. Um, it's just going to use my personal email for this. Um, and we're going to send it to my business account, analyticscollective.com. We'll type in data analyst assistant report. 
the message we're just going to put defined automatically by the model so it can just figure it out for us. So now we can type in an analysis. Hey, can you provide some high level insights of our current data set and send an email over now? Perfect. So these are high level analysis, highest revenue order close. Customers from North America, most women's credit cards. So look, it literally did a high level analysis. We go to my email right here and we have our subject line and I'll have to work on formatting, but all of this was already emailed here and we can automate this on a weekly or, or monthly cadence. So perfect. That's how you build an AI agent. And hopefully that wasn't that complicated and pretty quick. Some common mistakes I want you to do is don't over-engineer things. Don't try to handle every possible query on day one. Um, build an MVP. Sometimes you don't even need to do automation. Sometimes you don't even need to use AI agents. Be mindful of rate rate limits. Like using OpenAI is very expensive. Using any AI API is pretty expensive. So be mindful of the cost you're using on API cost. And lastly, uh, be good on error handling. Add fallbacks if data isn't found and, and be good. So action items for you is I want you to build an AI data analyst, AI agent bot of yourself. You can build this exact same thing. You can follow along with me and write any comments of what you want to see next. Look, I know this can be overwhelming, but I want you to remember everyone starts at the beginning. I've started with Python. I'm pretty new to NADAN myself, but I'm, I'm really excited. I've been doing this for the last couple of months with NADAN and um, start small, iterate often. And before you know it, you'll be automating everything. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like, consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.